What's up guys, this is going to be our first of many tutorials on an RPG series. I noticed there haven't been many using the Unreal Engine. In fact, I haven't really seen any at all. I've seen mostly shooters, multiplayers, things of that sort. But we're going to open up Unreal Editor today and we're going to focus on our first one is level streaming. I would go over navigation and how to use the whole editor, but I've seen that's been done quite a few times. It's not really hard to find any tutorials over that, so we're just going to focus on level streaming today. And level streaming is a way for you to use one one big map to seamlessly drive other maps using volumes, triggers, and stuff like that. So the player won't really notice it. Um, we're going to start off we see we're in this example map. This is a third person example template. Uh, you can get it from the from the Unreal Market as soon as you start a brand new project. You can choose first person. I'm going to focus on third person for this tutorial series. Now we have one through seven maps here. We have a persistent map. When you first open up, you're going to be in this persistent map. Now to make a new map, which we're going to do for this tutorial is we're going to see this little drop down over here we're going to go to create new and we're just going to call this map underscore eight because I wanted eight maps to begin with and it should show up down here as well as it should also show up in your content browser what we're going to do with that map is we're just going to put in a cube press W to move it and when I toggle off and on this map it'll toggle off and on the cube because I put the cube in map 8. Now the persistent level holds all the maps so when you toggle this off everything that was in the persistent level is now gone. That sky, that's blueprint, that's everything except for that cube that I put map 8 just now. So for right now, we're going to use blueprints to drive a function to make this map appear and disappear whenever you want. Now, if you don't know what a blueprint is, a blueprint is a, like a pretty cool way for you to basically code without coding. It's like drag and drop visual script version of code. So if you're an RT type and you don't like the practicality of like functions and code and programming and all that, this is a drag and drop node based way of doing that. So to find, you can make blueprints in different ways. You can just right click, make blueprints from there and stuff like that. But we're going to do it all from the main level blueprint. So right now we're in that level. What we want to do is we want to go to the persistent level. You can double click or you can click and press enter. It doesn't really matter. But we're going to open up our level blueprints it's right up here. And this is where we'll be doing all of our function today. So we're just going to minimize this for right now. And while we're inside of the example persistent map, what we're going to do is we're going to go over here to all of our editing and stuff. And we're just going to drive in a box trigger. Now this box trigger is just a box that we can use to trigger certain events. We're going to make sure it's in the floor. Use R. We're going to scale it. Scale it a little bit up. Make it a little wider. Higher. That's good enough. That's good. So we're going to go. We have our box sugar and it's inside the persistent level. And this box over here is inside the map 8. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to our third person example and we're going to right click. Right click just allows you to put different functions and variables and stuff. Uh, you can see because we have our box selected, they are already created a reference to it. But we're not going to just use that reference. We're going to make an event. And our we want our event to make that trigger used as a switch to load and unload. So right now it's used as a collision. So we want to begin something and end something. So we're going to right click again, we 
we're going to go to collision, end overlap, and we want to unload and load, or load and unload. Now, you can do it just by right clicking and typing in load, but I like to do it from, from this line that means executable. So we want to execute a load. We want it to load our streaming level. It's right there. We also want it to end and unload. It's right there. Now, what do we want to load? We want to load the map, right? So it says over here in level name, none. We want to change that. Make it map underscore eight. We do the same thing for here. Map underscore eight. Enter. Now, right now, it's telling you when you're inside of the box, we want to load map eight. We want to make sure that that's visible so we can see that box. We can see that map. And when we exit out the trigger, we want it to unload the map. Now, for future purposes, you might want to keep it loaded. So we might not even need this unload, but for this testing purposes, we're going to use it. So let's exit out here. We compiled it. Compile is a way to just say, hey, do it, drive it. And now when we press play here, we can move our character WASD, jump, and as you see, when we went inside the trigger, it loaded our box. When we left the trigger, it unloaded. So this is could be a fun way to use many different maps. If you have large, huge, scalable maps, and you want it to work easily, and you want to maybe do small chunks of maps instead of one huge open world map, there'll still be a big open world the character just won't notice is actually pieces of an open world all driven by one persistent map. So that's a fun way to do level streaming.